Imagine this. You're at the movie theater, but the app is taking a little while to load your ticket. So you hold up the line for the movie that everyone's been waiting months to see. We've all been there. It's frustrating. End users don't care too much about the technology that you use, but a beautiful and elegant app that is slow, janky, and constantly crashing is kind of like putting lipstick on a pig. That beautiful UI is overshadowed and wasted by poor performance. Performance is everything because bad performance doesn't just hurt your bottom line short term as users get fed up and leave your app, but it also hurts your brand long term when people are sharing negative reviews like this one. Ouch. Flutter has been built to help you deliver apps that not only look and feel good, but also performant and reliable. So reliable, in fact, that Universal Studios saw their app's crash rate drop to less than 0.1% when they switched to Flutter. It's built to go beyond the performance capabilities of what's expected of traditional cross-platform frameworks, ensuring that you never have to worry about your app's stability or speed. Here's how Flutter has and continues to deliver the very best performance on every platform right out of the box. I like this Ares thing that we've got going on, so let's start there. In Flutter's experimental era, we made two foundational choices related to performance. First, we bet on Dart which came with an ahead-of-time compiler enabling Flutter apps to compile to native ARM or x64 machine code. The result? Consistently fast app startup times. Second, we bypassed native UI kits and brought our own rendering layer, leveraging the power of device hardware by talking directly to the GPU. That result? Fast rendering and smooth animations across our two stable platforms at the time, iOS and Android. But as with all technical decisions, there were trade-offs, which became all the more apparent as Flutter grew in popularity. For example, how different platforms handle shader compilation. Some defer more work to runtime, which can cause performance issues, leading to drop frames in the first few seconds of launching an app. So we began to experiment with a number of potential solutions. Some showed promise, others were dead ends. Eventually, we landed on an approach that would keep our original ethos, using our own rendering engine, but this time leaning on the power of modern graphics APIs like Metal on iOS and Vulkan on Android for a smoother and more predictable graphics performance. We called it Impeller and introduced it to developers back in 2022. For over a year now, Impeller has been the default renderer for Flutter apps running on iOS. Flutter 327 marks the next step in our Impeller journey. Impeller is now also the default renderer on all Vulkan-enabled Android devices. And don't worry, Android devices without Vulkan support will continue to use Flutter's original rendering engine, Skia. We've run a number of benchmarks and we're really excited about the improvements. Using Impeller, we saw as much as a 97% decrease in max rendering times and a 100 megabyte reduction in memory usage while running the animation-heavy Wondrous app. Who doesn't love a snappy and smooth user experience? Even more exciting than those numbers are the new possibilities that Impeller unlocks. Earlier in the show, Kate shouted out a Flutter developer who built a cool demo to showcase a significant increase in Flutter's fidelity on iOS. That fidelity will only further improve given the added support for the display P3 color space in Flutter 327, meaning that you get to take full advantage of high definition iOS displays. This work was made possible, at least in part, by the updates we've made to Impeller. Another exciting addition driven by our impeller work is Flutter GPU, a new low-level graphics API we announced as a preview in early 2024. Flutter GPU gives you access to the machine's GPU from dark code and enables you to build custom renderers for the most complex graphics, including 3D. This development is particularly exciting because it pushes the envelope of what a cross-platform framework is able to do. It empowers teams to craft breathtaking visuals, the kinds that separate your app and brand from the competition. It also streamlines the entire development workflow for your team because they only have one code base to create and maintain, thanks to a single unified graphics API that delivers consistent performance across all devices. Next, let's hop on over to the web. We announced Flutter on the web as a technical preview in 2018 with Flutter 1.0, compiling Flutter web apps to JavaScript and using HTML-based rendering. Once Flutter Web joined mobile in our collection of stable support platforms, we transitioned from HTML to WebGL by using Canvas Kit, a WebAssembly-powered engine leading to performance improvements and consistency across Flutter Web and mobile apps. 
Canvas Kit uses the Skia rendering engine, which Flutter Mobile also used at the time, giving both web and mobile the same fidelity and rendering behavior. And as Flutter's moved into its production era, we're starting to see some other big bets pay off. Earlier this year, we announced that all code in a Flutter web app can now be compiled to Wasm, making Flutter web apps faster than ever. As an experiment, we took the Wondrous app, which is built to demonstrate the richness and performance potential of Flutter on native devices, and ran it on the web. At the 95th percentile, how fast were the slowest frames? Compiling to JavaScript and running it in the browser was nearly five times slower. But that was just our first experiment. We then compiled the app using WebAssembly, which cut the difference between web and native in half. As a result, we've stopped asking ourselves, how much faster is Wasm than JavaScript? And started asking, how close can we get to native speeds? Which is really perfect timing because as of mid-2024, all plugins developed by the Flutter team are now Wasm compatible. As the saying goes, it's always good to eat your own dog food. So we've been using it to power Dartpad and Flutter's API docs. The 327 release also introduces an experimental setting to run Dart and Flutter dev tools as a fully Wasm compiled web app. I happen to get my hands on some benchmarks for this new Wasm compiled version of dev tools. Average total frame times are 27% faster, while the outlier averages were significantly reduced as well. All of this brings us to Flutter's support for desktop apps on macOS, Windows, and Linux. In November 2022, we removed OpenGL from the macOS Embedder, moving 100% to Metal, a win both for speed and simplicity of the code base. Fast forward to today, Flutter is delivering the performance users expect from native applications on macOS, Linux, and Windows. It's no surprise that there are millions of users who are depending on experiences powered by Flutter Desktop. One of those experiences was brought to life by Rive. They needed a tool that could handle heavy graphics rendering across multiple browsers and platforms. So they rewrote their Rive editor, an animation tool, entirely in Flutter to enable developers to create beautiful multi-platform illustrations on web, macOS, and Windows. As for upcoming improvements, we're really excited to bring impeller support to macOS, Windows, and Linux. It's not quite ready yet, but we'll let you know when it lands. So to recap, on mobile, Flutter's investment in Impeller is improving rendering speeds and opening the door to true 3D graphics. Flutter web apps achieve benchmarks usually only possible on flagship phones, and Flutter desktop apps are as performant as their native counterparts. We're excited to see how Flutter can help you on the journey to delivering apps that perform as beautifully as they look, regardless of where you choose to deploy them. Up next, Andrew will talk a bit more about Flutter's robust developer experience and thriving ecosystem.